Alrighty, everyone. I hope you guys are excited for another night of Cyber Shadow Tournament action. Tonight we have the Big K1 versus Eric's 33. And with me tonight, we have our commentary, Norimaki SR and Turkey. How are you guys doing tonight? It's Streiser. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Excellent. So uh, I'm pretty excited for this one. I'm going to get our racers kicked off. You guys have fun. Thank you much. Yeah. And welcome, everyone, to another exciting match of Cyber Shadow 80% Spring Tournament Return to Mecha City. And tonight we have Eric's 33 versus the Big K1, a.k.a. Kyle. Uh, this is going to be a good one, Turkey. I think um, I'm not sure if they have any unverified PBs, but checking the boards really quick. Got about a difference of three minutes in PBs based on what's there now, but I know Eric's has been making a lot of improvements as of late, and I believe Big K1 has been really close to that sub hour. Um, had a couple of at least good attempts that just maybe have fallen short at the latter part of the end, but uh, definitely has the potential to, to break that marker anytime if they haven't done so already. Indeed, on that. Last time I looked, I believe Big K is just in and around under 101, or around 101 or 1 hour 50 something. Um, Eric's around the 103, 104 mark. So, as you, as you say, about three minutes difference between them and in the world of Cyber Shadow, that's not much at all. Simply because this game is hard. This this game will kick your booty. It really does. And uh, I mean, you won't really notice that in this little tutorial section they're going through where the runners are going to be trying to do these little, like, I call them coyote boosts. I don't know if we have an official name for them in the community, but if you jump just as you're, like, about to fall off of a ledge there, you get a little boost, gives you about three frames of additional forward movement. So getting as many of those as possible throughout the run, very important because over the course of the run, that's going to add up. Um, so definitely. Um, Definitely something to, to watch out for, but now they're off into the races into Chapter 1, where, again, it's not going to be too much difficulty going on here. This main section is all about making cycles, and, you know, they're going to try to get these boosts in where they can, obviously, just to give them that little push forward, and then being aware, you know, that they are going to be trying to, to meet certain cycles with platforms and steam coming up here shortly, but the first important thing, and the important tech, is the damage boost as uh, Big K1 just demonstrated, as well as Eric. So both of them off to a very even start there, being able to get through that without losing any time. Indeed on that. So yeah, as he's mentioned with the front type of um, starting with chapter one, several things come into play. Technical platforming is the game of the front half of this run. The game is essentially a game of two halves. Uh, some key aspects are ledge boosting, damage boosting, and cycle-based techniquing. So, Keep it on top of all of that. I mean, with stage one, it's sort of getting your bearings in. But as I said before, um, usually this game is is still challenging even from the get go. I mean, compared to other parts, this is a bit more straightforward. But anything can easily go wrong at a given moment's notice. So it's making their way through forward, um, getting through without any hassle, keeping on top, just meeting that platform there on Big K's side, and Eric's following suit. It's, well, it's the first cycle to essentially meet. Um, this one is pretty relaxed. Um, for the front half of um, chapter one as they go into our opening boss or stage mid boss, um, the smasher. Key point to note, just don't stay underneath him because if he crush if he smashes, he smashes and that's an instant death. Yeah, that that's never happened to anyone, I promise. I'd never let that occur ever. No, no, not at all. Not not at all. all. The second half of it is, you know, you get closer, he starts using fire as a technique. It's not a big deal for these runners since he short boosts, really, or short jumps, really quick slashes, both of them making relatively quick work. I think Big K's got a slight advantage on that one just because his, uh, his damage was a little bit tighter um, before going into the second part of that fight there. But uh, Eric's is not far behind at this point. Still early game as they enter this um, big giant room, and this is where our first real instance of cycle base uh, movement comes into play. There's three cycles to meet within this given room. First one is coming up on Big K side meeting this spinny platform. He meets that without much hassle, so he's meeting the first cycle. Wants to get over here and jump across to this platform, gets there for the secondary cycle. So all good on his end. Um, the third yeah. one is a little more trickier. It does involve a damage boost um, above a bit of a bit of a pitfall, so it can easily lead to a death if you go for it. Um, Big K wisely taking the um, safer approach of going the lower grounds, um, less risk of taking the death, and only a minor time sacrifice as a result. Yeah, Eric's unfortunately losing a little bit of ground there. The rust flies gave him a little bit of hassle, and he ended up falling. 
um, and having to kind of reset everything. So he's going to be way off of any cycle that he's probably practiced on. He's going to take it safe, though. Still get through. Hasn't taken a death, which is the important thing, but definitely did lose a little bit of ground just because the rust fly wasn't being very cooperative. Jay okay, clearing um, pretty much the bulk of chapter one now and um, still has the main stage boss, um, Apparator. And um, Apparator, you pretty much want to stay in close with. Um, this happens with a number of bosses, especially early doors. Um, pretty much the key aspect to try and at least get close enough to the point that you're going to at least evade his first projectile. From that point, you could choose to get in a little closer and evade the second, or you could take the hit. Either way is fine. From there, you want to just keep it again following through take some damage boosts into her and get much damage then the idea is to try and end the fight as he jumps but that is a tight window to catch him big cage had a little bit of a little bit of profit there but keeps himself alive and gets operator down nicely yeah he got there down to go, that one hp and, yeah he, he 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 got down to one hp and wisely decided to just play it safe not take the death there and then uh, and, and get by him so Eric's trying to get that toe clip, finally does a little bit, so that'll make up a little bit of ground on what he lost there from that fall earlier. Still good good fights from both of them as uh, we're getting ready to go into, I'd say, what really starts to kick off the difficulty of this run, although it's not the most difficult stage. Chapter 2 is known to grind uh, a few people. <laughs> it's grinded me a few times for sure. Um, but this particular section, this is where it really starts to kind of pick things up. There's all kinds of things going on that you have to avoid, all kinds of spikes and instant death pits with these munchers, and uh, everyone's going to still want to try to keep some cycles going here if they're well practiced in the game. So they're definitely like looking to make sure that they're hitting specific things there. Uh, this will be kind of the like the next instance I think that you would potentially see what we call um, ledge grabbing. Uh, which can be done on the 60 FPS setting. Uh, if either runner is running like the 144 Hertz setting, um, they'll just get the advantage of a quicker sword strike, slightly quicker sword strike to deal more damage, but would not be able to do these ledge grabs here. Um, so we're gonna see probably some runners trying to, to get those in there. Um, it'll become a little bit more prevalent though more in chapter three. But, uh, first we've got this giant rust fly to deal with. Looks like PK, not too many, not too many issues there. And uh, we'll see how Eric's does with that. Indeed, this room is a little bit finicky. You want to take the um, core out of the um, bug first um, to expose the main bug out. Problem is, every time you hit it, there's a lot of rust flies flying around the arena. There is certain manipulations you can do to um, at least have control of the field, but they can get a little bit out of control. And once they do, that room can get very dangerous in a, in a very quick amount of time. But Eric's getting through as well um, in nice, manly fashion. Fashion. So both runners getting through nicely as we have Big K now approaching uh, this mid-stage boss, um, Laser Brain, using his Essence, um, which is this game's version of currency, to pick up um, the Blade Extend. So it's going to give him a bit more range on his sword. And he's just going to keep slapping into the um, into the boss, trying to aim for the core in the um, center of the uh, center of the field, simply because it does double damage if successfully connecting. Um, and one of the only bosses to actually have a weak point. For what reason, I don't know, but we don't argue. <laughs> Yeah, you strike that core, you actually do two points of damage instead of one that the slash goes elsewhere. You can use your advantage too, because that actually carries over to the side lasers. Uh, you saw that, that Big K, he actually didn't quite manage that too well, lost one of his platforms and had to do kind of an extension there. Eric's managed his really well, kept the, uh, the closer block in play, and he's just slightly making up just a little bit more ground with that fight as well. He's right back on the heels of, of Big K at this point. Not much between them at all, pretty much just a room going in. They get to have a little bit of a relaxed moment here. We have one of our first examples of the Order Scroller. Pretty much a thing that happens in a lot of games. Um, so with this elevator, you, you're just waiting. Oh, yeah, you, you, you say relaxed, but I mean, my casual playthrough, I don't know about yours, but I died a few times here. These rust flies are annoying. Um, I died more than a few times, <laughs> pretty much safe to say. <laughs> But pretty much one well, of the key factors here is um, just trying to eliminate as many of the rust flies as you can. Each runner has their own different way of approach. You can still follow a certain style and pattern that you can forge so you know exactly where you're going, how the enemies are going to spread, and basically manipulate the field according to your liking. So this could, this section can pretty much just be done in multiple ways. Just wait for the elevator, follow your pattern, and try not to hit those instant death spikes. There's quite a few of them. Yeah, and if if you if what you're seeing doesn't look familiar to your version, you might be playing on the uh, the console version. I believe both these runners are on PC, 
um, and it looks like they have the exact same elevator. There are some minor differences between plat uh, the platform versus the PCs at this point. Um, that will be fixed as soon as the next patch is ready to go, and everyone will be on the exact same kind of like enemy spawns and things like that that is there, but there is that, exist that difference that exists today. So we're coming up to the trash elevator here. Um, again, just trying to mate cycles, but um, not lose too much time getting the movement, because you want to get to this point about exactly when Big K gets here. He looks like he met that cycle just fine. He just has to take out these lasers so that it doesn't disrupt the falling trash, as he uses that to, to get up here to the save point and get ready for our next actual stage boss, the Scrambler. Uh, this is a big guy. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot. He does uh, alternating attacks with the fire there, and then he tries to shoot you uh, with his other arm. Uh, but you can stay in close, like BK is there, jump over the flames, and, and try to get him. You can actually get even a little bit more damage with a slight hop there. Uh, he was opting to take it a little bit safer by going higher, from what I could tell. Uh, but he's got these three different phases, and he just keeps getting smaller as you uh, break him apart there. Uh, Big K handling that fight extremely well. Eric's looks like he's well on his way to finishing this off with one last single phase to go. Pretty much almost getting there, and one of the things we keep in mind here, a bit like with Apre, we like to keep in close, but in the case of uh, Scrambler, that's pretty much that's pretty much on the factor of, because if you take more distance, it changes his offense. There's a couple, there is at least one or two other attacks that Scrambler can do, but because we stay in close, we force that part of the script out of the field. So we know what exactly what he's going to do every time we enter the fight. And as a reward, we get Rising Fire. So... We've, that's a, the first one we got Shuriken, we now get Rising Fire, which is an upward slash. Um, with this one, you don't actually have to have SP to use, it'll just act as an upward slash. If you happen to have SP though, it will act as a um, as extension of Rising Fire, so Fire will just fly out. And um, this can be pretty useful in a number of spots through the course of the run as we get through going into Chapter 3, where this is really going to test our runners a bit more um, on their knowledge and know-how, um, not only on level layouts as well as technical aspects, but we pretty much get everything that we have, but tenfold. So there's going to be more damage boosting involved, more leg grabs if they choose to go for them, and just more general knowledge of the enemy layout, simply because they can pretty much rip you and get in your way quite easily. It also has a pretty darn good song. <laughs> I like to equate it to like a training montage, though. I know it's like the third stage and it's really like testing what you know, but the song just really, like once you get here and you hear it, it really kind of motivates you. I've noticed both runners not going for any of these ledge grabs, so I'm wondering if maybe they both have, are both uh, 144 hertz players, maybe. I know, I know, Eric's is not. Um, but as I, I believe he did a ledge grab in chapter two, um, but I don't know. I don't know how many of the ledge grabs in chapter three there are, because there is quite a number of them that you can go for. Some more useful to go for than others, and in some of them aspects, it may only be minor times. But it's more time to save as you go through. But with certain ledge grabs, some of us opt to not go for because it's quite risky to attempt and failing to get it could cost you even more time than you have to stand to gain, as well as changing the format of the enemy enemy position as well as the way of the enemy's movement. So it, that's a pick and choose aspect of um, which ones you really want to go for. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Eric's did indeed actually go ahead and do one. It did take some time, as you just mentioned. It was like you know wasting time to get it. It took him a little while to get that, but he definitely did there. But no major Ooh. issues, no deaths uh, from either side at this point, which is uh, really clean. I'd like to see that up through Chapter 3 at this point. Um, currently, Big K is now in kind of the next part here. He's going to be making his way very shortly to this stage's mid, like, mid boss, uh, which is a big, fiery tank known as the Hunter Tank. And um, this one... You might see Rising Fire, you might not. There's not much SP normally through routing at this point, but you might get like one strike in just to kind of break that upper core just a little bit quicker and maybe manage the lower ones. But this is projectile heck, man. There's just projectiles going everywhere from the core, from the turrets that are on the side. Big K, though, making very quick work of that fight, actually. No major issues there and managed it pretty darn well. Playing those turrets to that advantage means it is a bullet hell of a boss. Um... But taking the swipe on a couple of the turrets at specific points of the fight just forces the turrets back into the ground, so it eliminates at least some of, the, of that bullet hell and makes it a more manageable battle. Um, Eric's uh, making his attempt on the tank now. Um, 
just trying to get the core out and so switching sides to knock more of the turrets into the ground to reduce the, um, as I mentioned, the bullet hell and gets the kill. Nicely done. Yeah, the main thing there is to just make sure that none of those turrets fire off a bullet off screen that you aren't paying attention to uh, because it can get you in trouble later because those things don't despawn until they hit something, which is annoying there. Um, good snipe on Big K's side there. It's a very tight window to throw that shuriken to be able to just keep your movement forward through that one little section and not get knocked around and put into the fire pits there. Um, so that was extremely clean um, on his side. But again, we're only about a room difference between these two. This is still an extremely, extremely close race through two and a half chapters, two and three quarters, I'd say, at this point. And uh, coming towards the end of chapter three, at least on Big K's side, oh, a little low on Eric's side. I thought that would have been all right, to be honest. Term that yeah, I've, I've had that but... unfortunately happen, but he didn't get trolled by the big laser or the, the following guy. So at least got through cleanly, maybe a little bit slower, but at least he didn't die. And usually if you miss that snipe, you're kind of setting yourself up for some trouble there. So well played yeah, by him on that one. Very, very well handled by Eric's there to um, play that as as you could, dependent on obviously missing that shuriken. Can be a big pain. So keep yourself in the field. Does very well as we know how Big K approaching this stage boss. Uh, he's going to stop to purchase this um, swag blade, um, saw blade on a, um, on a string. Yeah, Man, so it's a boss. very fun weapon. <laughs> I want it is one for indeed. Christmas. Can I get one for Christmas? I'll see what I can do, but I don't know if they'd let me um, ship it overseas somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt until you try, right? <laughs> Fair point. That's what's going on about that. My hunter got two phases off. The first phase is done. This is the main reason why we want the um, swag blade, because he spends most of phase one in the air, using rising fire to his advantage to score decent damage and get that kill on phase two in the middle before he even has a chance to move. So, pretty much, um, no complaints there. Nicely put up, nicely put forward. As um, we know, Albert's making his way into the fight and pretty much, literally, just a boss fight away. The reward for this fight, Airstrike. So Airstrike is quite an interesting one. It's very useful through the course of the run, acting as a pogo. But with SP, it has, that explosive, it has an explosive property and the advantage of being able to double tap it down to force you to fire down at a rapid pace. And this can help with certain long drops. So you can just save that extra bit of time by forcing yourself down for, further and forward. Eric with a nice kill as well on the, um, on the Bio Hunter. So yeah, no was... problem with Bio Hunter today. So good, good job on both of those parts. We're carrying that swipe blade further, it seems. So why is that? Well, so as you just saw on Big K's side, there was a big flash that happened off screen there. Um, on the way out of this area, there's a pet pack of dynamite. The swag blade, if you manipulate it properly, um, actually hits that dynamite as you're going by it. It allows you to explode it ahead of time, and will actually save you quite a handful of seconds. Um, because it takes something like five, six seconds to explode if you hit it normally. So having exploded that before getting here just means they can just walk right out the door. So, you know, again, managing that blade very properly and believe me, nothing feels worse than thinking you've got it and misses. Um, so you definitely want to listen for when it plugs that. But then the swag blade then kind of pays you back by saying, OK, now I'm going to make things a little bit trickier in this platforming section uh, going through the monkey shrine. But the runners are experienced. They know what they're doing. Big K putting on a pretty good display of how to deal with the swag blade during the uh, the climb to get his wall glide or wall wall cling. <laughs> Nicely done, yep, and as you say, so this is one of the dojo sections, there's a couple in the run, it's essentially a test of, um, just a test of skill to obtain your equipment, and this is a race to the top against this big blue monkey, who, um, you don't want to get to the top, um, unfortunately you can, you do have some leniency and error, if should you have to make a mistake or have to fall down a bit, but if that monkey beats you, that door closes and you're forced to drop all the way down to respawn it, and so, getting up there, no problem on Eric's end. And here we get his wall climb now as we have Big J going through into chapter four where this run really picks up the pace. Yeah, this is where this is where the meat and potatoes of this run begins because you know there there's a lot of enemies pretty much in all these ones, but this one really favors the projectile side of things. There's just things shooting at you left and right. And then on top of that, there's gonna be a lot of instant death spikes lining the walls, the floors, death pits everywhere, like this game is definitely trying to make a statement, end this chapter to say, I am here to kill you. 
and and we're gonna I'm gonna do my best to do that. Um, the swag blade really at this point is kind of like extra gravy. Sometimes it can throw runners off if they still got it this late. But I mean, I've seen some people manage it up to a point, but eventually they probably are gonna be more comfortable getting rid of it. And oh, getting trolled by the freaking dragon snake. I I don't even know what to call those things. It went up high and blocked the shuriken shot. So or maybe the shuriken was a little low, but either way having to waste some time to get up there and hit that other switch, which is so painful to happen. <laughs> I know exactly what to call them, but it's not exactly what you call PG friendly. Yeah, I mean, let's not, let's not do that. But yeah, I've got a few choice words for, <laughs> for Momo, so especially when they want to behave like that. But yeah. But there's no, no, no big issues there. We're going to keep an eye on what's going on with Big K here. He's coming up on a very interesting little exploit of the game's coding. Um, these cyber rooms are, you know, ways to, like, basically hack equipment to, you know, open doors and things like that. But this particular one, all you have to do is hit the switch on the left and you leave and it's done. You don't have to hit the actual, like, switch on the right. So we kind of exploit that just a wee bit, um, just to save a little bit of time there. And uh, Big K decided, I think now is long enough for me to have that swag blade. I actually intentionally took damage to get rid of it while in there. That is fair, especially with these um, little aerial turret things, because once you once you start attacking them, they like to start spouting a lot of bullets. And if the swag blade happens to catch a few at the wrong time, you might end up having to deal with some bullets that you wasn't expecting to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, like, a, an example of another thing that would be really annoying is on Eric's side there, those guys with the rope that rotate around that big central wood, if it stops things in front of you and you're not expecting it to, you run into it, you take damage that you really weren't planning on. Like, just, there's a lot of things that the swag blade can kind of interrupt when you're in the flow. And having it this long is actually a surprise. I don't see many runners get the swag blade this far. It's true indeed, we got on big K side. When we've spoken of cycle-based um, stuff, this is one of the scarier-looking ones. Oops. And as you can tell, you take a dive through the floor, you land, you jump across, and you... It sounds like it's simple, but it's much scarier than it sounds. I promise yeah. you that much. The, the movement to get even an opportunity for that is so precise. If you hesitate even like a, a quarter of a second, you're not going to make that cycle. So... You know, big kudos to do. It's, it feels really good to execute. It's also scarier than I'll get out. I know I've conquered a few times um, going for that as well. But, you know, if you trust in the cycles, you know that your movement is absolutely smooth. No issue. You're going to make that. You just got to trust in it. I'm curious to see what Eris is going to do with the extra with the extra um, the swag blade here. Because... Um, as mentioned, you don't see very many runners take it uh, much beyond the first cyber room. So to even have it at this point was a bit crazy, but oh, there it goes. Okay, but may may maybe I'm not going to get my question answered. Never mind. Uh, I mean, if anything, they do help with those those floating turret guys. Like, it, they really do. But, you know, in, in the case of, like, making the cycle here, he's already off pace for that. He could wait this out and make that one down there. That's always scary because you never know if that bottom one is actually going to be in the position, like... Are you a half cycle off? Or are you a full cycle off? It's always hard to tell, but he, he seemed to trust in it and he made it as well. So GG's on that one, considering that things were off a little bit. And uh, we've got uh, Big K now coming up on everybody's favorite boss, Turkey. How do you how do you like RNG? Hmm. I've had enough of my fair share of RNG over time, but... I mean, I, I've welcome. known you for a very long time, and yes, you don't like RNG any better than I do, but... <laughs> well, welcome to Mecha Dragon. So, um, this fight, as we mentioned, this is probably the most RNG part of the run in terms of uh, boss battles. So it's not, it's not like a grand scale of things, but there are certainly more things going on here than any other fight in terms of um, what can occur. So he can jump in from the left to the right, he can either jump up and through or swoop. As the biggest factor is the propeller, so the propeller things that are in the sky. Sometimes the combinations just don't work out for you. You may, you may see Mecha come in on the left, and there's just no turrets around for you to um, get a great platform to use your rising fire to your advantage. Um, so there are a few factors that you've got to keep in mind. There is certain, there's a little bit of manipulation at least with round one that you can do, and there's a couple of different manipulations that different runners use and take. But from that point, you kind of have to play the field to the best of your ability based on what's going on. And you can see a big K there getting a little, little bit messed over there with the with the platform, but managed to get one down and get get that fight finished. I believe that was a four rounder, so a decent a decent style of fight. 
Uh, most runners would ideally want to go for free, but the way Mecha Dragon just happens to operate, sometimes that's just not an option. Yeah, I mean, two would be the best that you can do, but you've got to be... There's a lot of weird things, and, and, and I don't think a lot of runners even fathom or even understand what's going on with it. Because, like, you know, I swear that this boss will just eat damage. Like, it looks like everything should be hitting. You're supposed to be, like, watching that HP bar just go down, and it doesn't. And no one's really sure why that happens, but... You know, it looks like now Eryx has got himself into a bit of a problem with the platforms as well, being, or, well, the dragon not coming near them. Um, it's, you know, a matter of, like, knowing kind of how to manipulate them, keep the platforms where you need them, plus get some SP back, too, at the same time. These things drop a lot of SP, these platforms, and, and making sure to manage that while keeping him manipulated. There's just a lot to manage with that fight, but that was a pretty decent three-rounder by Eryx. So made up a little bit more ground there. Um, as he's going to be going on to those Warriors of Light that we kind of missed on, on Big K's side as we were talking about Mecha. Um, this one is just kind of like a hit the crystal, make sure you don't let these little shadow guys hit the floor. If they hit the floor, they like to block a ton, and they can eat up so much of your time while you're trying to get rid of them, and this trial isn't over until everything is gone. Um, so you have to smack this crystal. These guys will spawn. At least you can see where they're coming from based on where the... Uh, the orbs go to the to the candles there, and it was uh, pretty well handled by Eric's as well. So, good clean, good clean area for both of them so far. Indeed, and for the reward of that, they get a, um, a weapon upgrade essentially. So the katana is going to be um, stronger. It's going to be able to deal more damage. I've heard that it gives you a very very short amount of additional range as well, although I've never actually noticed it myself. But I can believe that. It's like Extend and, Blade, but just naturally, I guess you could say. Blade Extend, but natural. Could do, yes. Yeah. Alright, uh, so we're gonna... System. Yep, I was gonna say, we got Big K on that one. Uh, very clean done, he didn't take a single bit of damage. And he uh, opted to go ahead and go for the E field. Um, it's kind of like a, a strat that I think a lot of runners are adopting uh, for the purposes of the next chapter. But to get through that fight is kind of like your roadblock on that one. And taking no damage puts him in a really good spot uh, for what he'll be aiming for to do here in Chapter 5. Uh, we'll see what Eryx is going to opt for when he gets there. Uh, he's already taken a hit on the Charge Blaster, which is another thing you could potentially carry through. Um, if that was something that you're a little bit more comfortable with, but it just kind of depends. But I'm seeing more and more runners do E-field strats these days. It's a very reasonable choice. It is. It, it all boils down to, are you willing to spend an extra 50 of your essence to switch over to something that gives you a far better defensive approach to Chapter 5? Um, the, pr the primary aspect of keeping the weapon or going for a weapon through Chapter 5 is there's two particular points in the section that you can hit a switch earlier than intended to be able to skip out a portion of the of what has to offer overall between the two roughly saves about 40 seconds for the course of the run so, i mean people who go with the gun generally gets a more offensive approach but considering a lot of enemies have projectile based aspects going on around here the e field is most certainly the better defensive op option to take giving you a far better opportunity to take that all the way through Furthermore, it also has something that the gun does not, the ability to hit switches off screen. So you can just save a little bit of time on that, but you're still spending a bit of time to get it. So they kind of nullify each other, but the biggest advantage is one of the skips is pretty much just before or just after, depending on which weapon you've got, to the Sage boss. So if you happen to have the E field, you can take you can hit the switch before you enter the second the main boss. Giving yeah, you more it's... of an opportunity to get the skip, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to double what Turkey said about, you know, can, can you afford the 50 essence? I mean, the, the money that drops in this game is specifically routed by each of these runners to get specific things at specific points of the run to make things a lot easier. So, you know, this this going in is an additional shop. That's why some people may offer to, to not go for the E-Field, save themselves the 50 for later comfort. It's really kind of runner's choice at this point. But, you know, each one of these runners has probably figured out their money routing very cleanly. Um, to, to make sure that they can get through these runs without too much trouble. And speaking of no trouble, Big K is going to easily get this skip. Didn't take a single hit on the way in. And uh, we'll now be skipping an upper up and around area and just going to be straight into meeting um, his upcoming nemesis, Alpha, here. Uh, but we'll probably be opting to be choked, uh, which will lose a little bit of time by comparison to anyone who maybe doesn't want to carry the weapon forward. Um, to, to get these skips and 
I'd say that the time loss for being choked to, to one HP certainly is easily outweighed, I should say, by the ability of getting these skips. It is indeed, I believe, from full health. It's in, in and around three and a half to four seconds that you're going to be costing here to have a shot at getting the secondary skip, which saves around 15 seconds. So you end up getting an 11 second net profit yeah. if you can get it, if you can take it to that point. But you do have to get by one of the bosses or one of the well, mid stage boss first, um, which can be a bit of a bit of a problem, especially if you choose to go all out. Um, one thing you haven't really touched upon was after chapter four, you get the parry. And this, this particular upgrade is very valuable from this point on, not just as um, a way of getting by the chapters, but to deal heavy damage to a lot of the bosses we see coming forward. Um, Alpha 1 is going to be the first boss we're going to come up to in a moment with Big K, and um, it's ever so satisfying to get the, full, get the full kill on him. But it involves a number of parries and precision slashing in order to do. So we'll see which approach he takes, if he's going to go all out or take it a little bit safer to um, keep his weapon. Um, taking a bit of distance there just to uh, make sure he's got more room for the parry. So he's going to take it a little bit safer, which is a fair call to be able to uh, keep this weapon for as much as he can. Yeah, he's definitely respecting kind of the down slashes, giving Alpha a lot of room to operate there. The, the shield makes this fight difficult in the fact that it would block the projectiles, and it's really it's really hard to judge distance. I think you can still parry with it, but the timing is actually even more tighter than not having it. Um, so I think he was just basically taking that as straight as possible. He did launch the shield away, which allowed him to parry because the E-field is down at that point when he does that. Um, but it was an extremely clean fight and didn't take any hits for it in the fight itself. He took one before getting there. Um, and Eric's in the, and him right now both are just, uh, I'd say exactly the same going on right now. Like Eric's got through his skip no problem as well. It's going to have right now currently two hits on his E field getting ready to go into Alpha 1. We'll see if he does anything different that maybe speeds up the fight by comparison. Um, or if he's going to take that more safer approach as well as um, Big K will be. Getting ready to do his second skip now. He's going to be able to hit the switch there on that particular side. I'll try to. Second attempt. Oh, he was going for the wrong door. There we go. He figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's basically saving himself a little bit of time there post this fight um, to, to not have to go through kind of like a mini cutscene of sorts to, to, to be able to get to his next upgrade. It looks like Eric's lost his E-field. I didn't see if it was before or during the fight, but it might have been during. It was indeed during the fight, unfortunately. Um, so he is going to miss out on the secondary skip. Um, but Big K getting a little Ooh. bit tight there. Manages to yeah. keep his off a flow and gets the kill. Fortunately, even if he did take the death, he may lose the time for the fight, but the door has already been opened, so he would already have had the skip in play, so he won't lose that time advantage at least. Yeah, that was really, really clutch, though. Down to one hit and everything was just going uh, crazy there in that particular fight, just because all of the, the spawns from hitting the eye, as well as all the spikes on the ground that it generates, like, it's just a lot happening. And uh, it almost slipped away from him, allowing Eric's a little bit of ground to make up there, but he got through it. And he's going to pick up everyone's favorite run, uh, part of the run, which is the dash. Now, with Ninja, can actually run. You'd think he'd have been able to do that from the beginning, but no. Well, if he could do it from the beginning, let's just say this run would be completely broken. <laughs> That's true. Fair, fair enough. But yeah, this is this is where the literal speed of the speed run actually comes into play. This is probably like the speedrunner's favorite thing. It allows you to do so much. As uh, Big K will be demonstrating, you've got this charge slash you can do. Obviously, you move at higher speeds. And and the one valuable thing is is while you've got SP. Um, you charge into something, whether it be a box, a monster, and it dies in that charge, you're going to get the one SP back that you use to do that slash. Uh, if you don't have SP, you do a charge slash, it's not quite as fast, and it doesn't necessarily kill things, but you can still kind of do things through it, it just won't be as effective. So obviously you want SP as much as possible. Uh, just to get the most value out of using that dash. But, you know, obviously now that you've got that, you want to go fast, but this game is kind of ready for you on that front. Very true. And this is where the second half of the run begins. We go from the technical platforming of the standard, ga of the standard game to a far more chaotic speed, as I mentioned, with, the, with using the uh, charging dash. 
that slashing um, and being able to get SP back for each kill that you successfully do. It, this pretty much means this is where your SP control is going to become very valuable to be able to ensure that you have the SP that you want going forward to be able to keep those dashes going, going at the best of velocity that they can. And it is pretty much a case of going crazy a little bit at times. Yeah, the dash canceling yeah. is a good way to move, but it also has this weird side effect sometimes of not allowing the ninja to keep, or at least get, you know, Shadow to get his full, like, speed. I call it tippy taps, um, a, a term I picked up from Space Nark, uh, where he, he has the running animation, but he's moving at, like, walking speed, and it, it gets really annoying, and dash canceling sometimes will cause that. Um, and it'll really throw you off if you think you've got your speed that you're supposed to, and you don't. Yeah. Usually that gets you into a bed of spikes or something that you really don't want to go into. Big K getting through chapter six without any real hassle to be fair as he comes up with the tunnel cleaner. And when we say when we mentioned about parry and doing a lot of damage, and this is where you kinda of notice it. So you're getting the parries on these um, first set of um first set of projectiles there to score heavy damage, knocking them back in. Um, the longer you leave the parry projectile out there, the weaker it becomes, and it will end up doing less damage. So you want to time it in such a way that you know his eyes are going to be open so you can cause major damage. Using the bombs here to manipulate into score even more, he was just a point away. Oh, went to go over Shuriken to play safe, was just a little early on it, but still had another one there, so gets through, keeps himself alive, and he'll be advancing on towards the Streets of Rage. The, um, a lot of runners have a lot of frustrations, if I may say. <laughs> Chapter 7 is a murder factory, it's what I like to call it. Um, this is, generally, if I've ever had a deathless run, Chapter 7, it, it kind of falls apart. Um, just, there's so much going on here. Uh, again, the enemies are masterfully placed, and the dev has been kind of devious in their in their kind of level design with this too. As uh, we'll see, there's a couple of like roadblocks to being able to progress um, through this particular one. Plus, you've got all these monsters that are throwing grenades and shooting you know rapid machine guns at you. And like this one that's aggroed there can be a bit of a potentially problem for Big K. As yep, there it is. Uh, the first knock knock. Obviously, you can't get past those until you beat the the eyeball on the stock there. Um, if you aggro one of those green guys, that guy will come and pester you, and it just makes things very difficult to deal with. Um, no problem the second time, didn't aggro the, uh, the machine gun guy and uh, was able to get by, no problem. But if you thought the first knock-knock was bad, wait till you see the second one. It's kind of the same thing, except instead of just uh, having to deal with him you know, with a platform, you've got three moving platforms over a bed of spikes. And, uh, yeah, just don't get knocked around. It's basically it. <laughs> well handled on that one. And Eric's finishing off Tunnel Cleaner as well. Indeed. I'd like to mention Wither, what Eric did in his fight. He took a different approach. There's a little bit of a thing that you can do in terms of uh, manipulating, manipulating a bomb spawn from him. By running away from him pretty much at the start of the fight, you'll end up forcing a bomb into the field. And you could essentially alter the script to a slight degree, or at least delay it out. To potentially get more damage in early on so took a nice approach there to um get that in and um, got through the fight without much hassle at all also he's gonna be able to try and uh, make a play and a catch up there with the death on big case so i might end up giving him giving the opportunity to get back in here but he's been keeping ground very well throughout this entire matchup as he deals with his first little knock knock gets the parry in and off he goes you know, we got, oh, yeah. uh, big, yeah, we got yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Turkey. I was gonna say, oh yeah, we got bubble skulls now, and then I was gonna. Let yeah, you I was gonna say this is where <laughs> Chapter Seven becomes a little bit painful. This, uh, this, g the green bubble goo is kind of annoying. Like if you let it propagate too much, it becomes a bit of a problem. And the larger ones have a nasty little surprise. Like you know, if anyone's a fan of kin Kinder eggs. These things have those in there, except for those skulls ex like to chase you down, explode, and they are quick. If you're trying to run from them, they are going to catch you, and they do a lot of damage if they explode on you. So trying to stay ahead of the green goo is an extremely important part of not dying in this particular part of the stage. Um, but so far, Big K is handling it really well. He's got his SP dispenser, uh, which was you know kind of free. It's just sitting there. You just had to go past the giant bug to get it. but. It's a free one, and it's going to be heavily used. And this is kind of the part of the run where the SP dispenser is everyone's favorite tool of choice. 
that is for certain simply because as it does, does exactly what it says on the tin. It dispenses SP. Um, as long as you manipulate it correctly, you can get pretty much your SP at certain points where you want it and how you want it. It gives you a more open approach um, and not have to worry about controlling your SP as much. And it also does open opportunities um, going into chapters 8, 9 and 10 to be able to do certain movement tech and um, strategies that would not be able to realistically be done without the SP dispenser simply because you'll end up draining your SP completely dry and be left with nothing for the rest of the chapter. So SP dispenser is is a Cyber Shadow Runner's best friend. Yeah, this point yeah, of the run, outside it's almost... of this guy. <laughs> oh yeah, outside of this guy. So Big K getting through chapter seven is about to be rewarded with well, you figure it's like you've seen you've seen the menu, it's all filled up with like items, so what could this guy possibly give you? Well how about those same items, but twice as powerful? Seems like a good plan to me. So yeah, Shenron here, so we as we kinda dubbed him from Dragon Ball Z fan. Basically, you give him the seven Dragon Balls, and he gives you a wish. And most runners are like, well, you know, I could wish Goku back, but I'd rather just have a double jump. And that's the big important thing. But you get a charge variant of everything that you can do. All your abilities now have a little bit more powerful attacks. So you can, you know, you can um, charge up a shuriken and make it an exploding kudai. Uh, to charge up your, your flame strike, it becomes kind of a, a higher traveling and a little bit more spread phoenix variant so you've got all these different charge things of, of all the abilities you've got and they're a little bit more powerful for you and this is especially at the part of the the run where you just like okay i feel really good and i want to go really really fast but the game is like um yeah about that <laughs> yeah the game pretty much at this point is now pretty much said okay well you've you've had seven chapters we've given you everything we can now it's time to test your metal, as pretty much everything's going to get thrown at you. Um, pretty much why we want that double jump, with the exception of just having a second jump. It also ties in with the, um, the SP dashing um, as well, because not only do you get the SP back after destroying something, but every time you successfully cut through and destroy whilst in midair, you replenish that double jump back. So as long as you've got the enemies or crates to continuously slash through, you could essentially stay in the air for eternity. Potentially, as long as there's something there, it's one of the feats, one of the many feats this game uh, challenges you to get. Um, I haven't gotten all, I've got 38 out of 40, and one of them is stay airborne for 30 seconds or more, but I have not done that one yet. <laughs> I haven't found the right place to try to pull it off, but yeah, the turkey's point, like I said, if you can keep hitting things in the air, you can constantly fly across screens as long as there's something for you to be able to charge through and then get your, your jump back. We're going to be going to the, I think this is our last cyber room of this particular run here. I haven't really talked about it much since the first one, but these are the ones you actually have to destroy the core. There's no, like, manipulating or skips to get through them. Um, but the reward for this one is uh, Shadow is about to get himself a nice, sweet little ride. In the form of Exo, and Exo is a very nice thing um, here. Um, so, unfortunately, he does, he, he, although we love him, he leads you to an auto scroller. Yeah, she she's uh she's kind of mean in that regard, being an auto scroller. But it's really kind of a fun segment too. Um, it's kind of very challenging, but once you understand like where things are, what your patterns are, it's very rare to make a mistake here. I'm not gonna say that it doesn't happen, but um, ideally you can pretty much get through this. You know, at least this part here being the most challenging, I'd say, with all the the spikes, the jumps, and of course if you smash into the side of any of those platforms, it's an insta death. Um, Big K doing a good job avoiding any of that now is going to be in what's really the auto scroller um, because you can't really do much here. These monsters are going to appear on script, and uh, it's always the same ones. They always appear kind of in the same order, and and there's not much to do here other than just kind of kill things. Um, but you have a little fun with it, and you know, it's, unfortunately, I want to point out though that Big K does have his SP dispenser still. He didn't burn any of it before the ride, however, so he's not going to take advantage the, of the uh, the SP dispenser becoming a mobile ATM. Very true. I mean, he does have a good amount of um, essence anyway, so he's probably going to be fine. But there is a little manipulation that can be done, as mentioned, burning your burning a couple of SP. Because for whatever reason, during these particular auto scrollers, if the SP dispenser is trying to dispense SP to you because you don't have full SP. It can't give you SP because you don't use SP in this bit. So instead, it just gives you money. 
Yeah. You could just sit. You get to a cutscene, you could just sit there and let that text box stay on screen forever, and you'll just basically just keep getting, guess, getting essence. Just free money for days. Yeah, it looks like Eric's is also skipping out on that as well, unfortunately. Um, so his is, his essence is a little bit lower than, than Big K's, and he probably could have stood to have a little bit extra, but he might be very comfortable with his essence routing. It may not be that big a deal, but kind of a recent thing that a lot of runners are starting to take advantage of because it allows you to be able to kind of make up for those early purchases that you, maybe you didn't want to take, or maybe you were like, okay, I'm trying something new, but I still want to have certain purchases at the end of the run. And it uh, looks like neither one of them are, are I guess are, I should say both of them are comfortable with where they're at in their essence routing at this point. I would imagine so. Um, I mean, otherwise they probably would have gone for the manipulation there. Uh, it, it, as I say, it's not necessarily essential. Um, that's something they're usually covered within their essence routes in general. Yep. But it does open up a couple of different options, although they are not necessarily the biggest of time saves. But they're, they're there if you want to go for them, or just to have that extra pocket change in case something does go wrong, you need to get an emergency SP replenishment. So it's pretty much down to runner's choice and comfortability in terms of going for that manipulation, should they have the dispenser still by that point. Um, Big K did unfortunately lose his during as he's going through Exos Part 2, where he's now a mech. And um, running gun is the name of the game, and there is certain things you could, certain things you could do to speed things up, just knowing where to tank, tank damage. So you know exactly where your health's going to be at, at all times, just to so you can just keep running forward essentially, so you don't have any stop still um, time losses. If we got this um, little um, little mistake boss, of, that'd be fair. It's probably I think it's the only boss of this stage actually. Now I think about it. Um, yeah, we are big behemoth is... lion ship. <laughs> yep, time to attack aggressively, as as Exo says right up front, which is a great contra reference. But um, no problems there. Usually three cycles like that. That's generally what you see. I haven't seen anyone get less than that. Um, but no big problems there, and we've still got Eric's kind of hot on his heels. He's maybe a few screens back at this point, um, but still moving on very, very strong uh, on this particular run here. Um, I will be curious. I noticed I didn't see Big K do it. Um, we'll see if Eric's might try for it. There's actually a little clip you can do here to skip through this door. Um, some runners get it, other ones don't. He did go for it, but the lineup of the green guys wasn't quite there. And Ooh. oof, that's what can happen if things don't quite go right there. And, and that's unfortunate. It's not a, a huge amount of time loss, but it's now made him lose his SP dispenser. Currently doesn't have any SP, which is going to make this a little trickier. I do like his pogo strats through here to just to keep moving, though. That's actually very smooth. Probably going to try and manipulate again and get Ooh, he this got time. It. Nice. Yep. Yep, very well done on the second attempt there. So just clip through the door there by doing a, a well, a, a running dash, and you don't even SP for that. He just went right through the door because Shadow keys on the monster and not the door, and the animation basically allows you to phase through whatever it is you're attacking. So since the game is like, oh, you're attacking this monster, I'm going to allow you to phase through everything there. And so that means you just go right through the door without actually having to kill it. FXO on uh, on uh, Big K's side. Hopefully we won't be saying F um, Shadow because this is essentially one of the big death cycle parts that can potentially happen. Things can get a bit bit crazy. Um, opting to um, take a full health refill. Um, there are a couple of options. Taking the full health, just going ham on one HP, or taking a return to menu and back into the game just to get um, about two thirds of your health back. Because one slight movement from this particular part could change the entire structure of where everything is going and what's doing what. And that could throw things through a loop to the point that you just get mauled. Yeah, and every every runner has kind of come up with a pattern that works for them. Um, so it's kind of cool to see the variations and the style that, that, that everyone's kind of cooked up for it. Big K's obviously worked. He got through there no problem. That's probably one of the scariest rooms, not only casually, but in the speedrun. I know this section is just brutal. Like this part of chapter 8 is painful. Um, that big saw blade being the biggest culprit of deaths everywhere just because it does so much damage. It'll follow you around and he didn't mean to trip those. So yeah, that's an intentional yeah. death in the spikes just to get rid of the security measures, um, which is not a big time loss. Uh, it is a time loss, but not major. It's certainly better than trying to fight your way through it and then dying later. It's a very wise decision. Trying to do a vertical climb with a big giant sword blade and a bunch of wall turrets that are now in play. 
it is far, it's far too risky to really be worth going for, especially if you're in a Burton Trigger. So, Big K taking the smarter choice there, just get rid of it, take a very minor, like, five second loss at, at, at worst. So, can't complain at that as we continue on forward into the final stretch of Chapter 8. Um, there are still some things that get a bit, um, a bit hectic and see which approach it takes here. You can take a low route or a high route. Opting to go the high route, um, to the more safer approach, um, but you don't really lose much for that, to be honest. No, a couple of seconds at, 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 at best, I'd say, depending on how well yeah. things go. I mean, again, it's certainly faster than dying, <laughs> and that's, that's kind of the important thing. Like, the name of this game for a good time is just minimize your deaths, however, whatever way you can. Um, but he's getting through this harrowing part of the chapter. I would say very effectively, and we're going to see how Eric's is going to do as he's heading into that. Opted to do the menu refresh, get himself back up to like six health, and uh, we'll be starting his grind through the latter part of chapter eight here as uh, Big K is uh, winding it down. Yeah, Big K opted to use a use a explosive kunai um, within that last stretch. Save you having to hit the switch to break the barricades. You can just use an explosive kunai, and it will destroy it as well. So taking advantage of his equipment there and Eric's taking a very smart approach there some runners do tend to tend to go for because that's all it is quicker to trigger the system but you then got the big sword blade which is usually the biggest concern to deal with so tripping the wire instantly he knows the sword blade is going to be there just take a small small sacrifice of time to destroy the sword eliminates the concern yeah it makes that so much easier to deal with because again the saw blade is the real culprit of like most of the deaths of this particular part everything else is is just kind of there Ooh, careful there Ooh. okay <laughs> that was a little close there with that secondary trip one and Ooh. oh no that can happen um that green guy he doesn't like to die very often it depends on when you do the down strike if he's off screen you're he's you don't actually hit him i found that out the hard way um, and then if he's there and he's allowed to kind of do the things that he does, he uh, likely bounces you into the spikes. And yeah, it's a thing that can definitely happen. There we go. It's a yeah, shame though, through. it's right before us at checkpoint. Hmm. Very true. We're getting through a second time, so it, not too bad. Won't complain at that, but yeah, there's uh, that, for some reason that particular green enemy, if you try and do that down, as you mentioned, do that down stomp whilst he's off screen for whatever reason you don't hit him and he hits you instead yeah. it's a bit cruel like, to be fair looks like docs didn't hang up big k all that much docs is one of those dangerous areas too that when things go wrong they go extremely wrong and and the thing that i'm glad we didn't have to talk about was the giant mines in the water uh, we talk about giant saw blades those giant mines hurt as well and staying out of the water is the best thing you can do there Looks like Big K got through without any problems. He's now currently on the auto-scrolling section of the boat. Everyone's favorite gambling part, apparently, because who knows what you're going to get. Um, the enemies and everything, that's the same. <laughs> Turkey trying to, to praise good RNG for, for Big K here by going for the slow boat chant. Apparently, that's kind of like the superstition nowadays, is if you... Sit there and say, I want a slow boat, or you're a slow boat, aren't you? Or this is going to be a slow boat, then you get a fast boat. And when we say that, it's what happens at the end of this sequence on how long you wait until you're basically cut free and you're able to move forward into the, the upcoming final chapter. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'd just like to see it be fair for both runners so that way everyone's on an even keel. But, well, I don't know. <laughs> I've never done that trap before, but I'll give it a try. Uh, you know what? I've tried it, and I've had mixed results. It, it sometimes works. Most of the time, it doesn't. I haven't seen I haven't seen a short boat in two weeks. If that helps. It looks like it did not work here. I shouldn't be surprised. I've been cursing runs since day one, <laughs> so I don't know why I even thought to try it. Eris now making his way into chapter nine. Uh, just to touch a little bit on chapter nine, it's one of the shorter ones in the run. Doesn't make it any less um, any, any less difficult, <laughs> simply no. put. He, he narrowly avoided taking a dip with those mines that I was talking about there by doing some pogos off some very well-placed enemies and, and well-timed pogos, so he avoided taking a death there. It's been a, a very cautious but effective Chapter 9 thus far. <laughs> Until my, and would... then I had to say that. <laughs> Unfortunately, on the big case side, um, chapter ten just it does it's the final chapter of the run. 
it does not go easy on you at the start. He's going straight into a boss fight with Combinatron, and he's been giving him a bit of hassle. He's opting to stick out with the fight, so he's going to try and get the, get the finish on him. Um, the biggest problem with Combinatron is that he, he has a um, he has a, basically a desperation attack of well, I say attack, but it's a desperation move of healing himself when he um, gets into low health. He can get into the phase of doing healing, and the problem is once he starts healing. If you just keep attacking him straight after he heals, he'll instantly want to heal again, and again and again, and it'll just keep happening until, well, until you give up, essentially. <laughs> well, yeah, give so. up or, or, or do what do what uh, the K is now currently doing. I mean, so, yeah, it's that, that healing factor kicks in right at the halfway mark, so if you take him down to half health, the, the script of the boss says, all right, you need to heal, and it does a lot more healing than your damage, especially without, like, a SP dispenser in place. So, you know, right now it looks like Big K is opted for kind of the more, like, straightforward approach, which is kill the hands. If you break the hands, they aren't able to heal, and now you're able to chip away that damage. I mean, there's a lot of fire going on, but it makes the fight doable. And ideally, you want to avoid that, so you've got to meter out your damage just right to avoid it, to keep it from, from doing that healing phase. Because once it goes to that healing phase, it you can win it, but it's much harder. Much harder. Yeah, very but, true. And yep, let's just fly through chapter 10 a bit. I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and he's on pass and everything. Actually, opted to go ahead and purchase an SP refill there since he had no SP. Uh, going into that, which SP is almost mandatory. Um, the problem with buying it there, I worry about his um, money routing a little bit, but uh, he may have everything he needs towards the end of the game here. He's got plenty to at least buy the SP dispenser, I'd say, for the final fight. Oof. But unfortunately, not hitting quite the cycles here. Um, this is an extremely interesting area and that again kind of like i talk about how we get through that one part in chapter eight every runner's kind of got their own comfort zone um and how they deal with these platform cycles and the monster cycles and if you just make one little hesitation or one miss and you're comfortable with like doing it one way everything changes and i feel like that's what happened with big k there initially and Eris got a very nice kill on Combinatron, and um, unfortunately, from the uh, from the uh, pure errors from Big K, he's given Eris a chance back out back at him here, and with Eris getting through the latter, the latter part of Chapter Eight, as well as Chapter Nine, and so far with Chapter Ten, he's coming, but he's coming for him. That is for yeah, sure. This, he's not done. He is this not race done, is getting so interesting. This could go either way. Literally, any death at this point could essentially send them back to a previous checkpoint, which will just even the field up, so anything can happen now. All right, so big case coming up on kind of the one of the trickier parts of the run. This is you, you, you feel like you've gone through the hard part with all the platforming he's done, but there's still just so much more going on here. Like these chain snakes can be a little bit trolly, and this room particularly. Um, there's a lot of waiting that happens here. You hit these switches, these doors take forever to open, especially these triple ones here. And these things actually hurt. I think they actually do like three points of damage to you. So if you're getting beat up here while you're waiting, it could be costly. Uh, fortunately, it's not too hard to manage once you get ahead of it. And uh, he gets through that very cleanly here. We'll see him getting ready to go to our final boss of Chapter 10. And uh, he's going to opt for the, the Firebird strats here to kind of did some early damage in on Spider Rail. Uh, was going to get an explosive kunai in there, but unfortunately didn't get the full charge and kind of just tinked the shurik in there. Um, so not quite the damage you'd like to see in the opening, but he's setting it up pretty well. Probably going to get to the Onion Ring phase and be able to do some good parries here um, and pretty much finish this boss off in short order. Like that. And indeed he does, and down goes the spider rail. Um, Eric, is, Eric seems to be having a bit of issue going into chapter 10 here, so um, hopefully he'll be able to get out of this death cycle and um, get back. It looks like he took an intentional death there to reset the room, so so he can yeah, reset the enemy position so he knows how to manipulate and maneuver around. Yeah, he's doing and, an uh, SP he's of room here, which is very difficult. That was a really smooth way of doing it, though. There's a couple of variations you can do there, because you can go over the top of those turrets of the ceiling. There's actually, um, I'd say, about a gap about as high as Shadow's Tall that you can actually go over those with and 
get through it. And I liked his pogo. It was very smooth by comparison to some of the variants I've seen there. Um, so well played by him to do it. Unfortunately, he did hang him up a little bit. So it's only allowed Big K that ability to kind of move forward as he's currently in the probably one of the most harrowing parts of the run, which is the final climb. This is a room that you really don't want to make any single bit of movement ever because enemies catch up. And these purple guys like to snipe you a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are programmed in such a way to anticipate your movement and they like to get right in your way. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Uh, Big K getting through it though, perfectly in the end, perfectly fine. Um, getting through the last two rooms, which are much more comfortable in comparison. Just up to get this SP dispenser here as he goes into the final trilogy of fights. So I say trilogy, so there's three here that you gotta do on one life meter. So Go crazy as we begin with Apparatum. We usually use the um, dashing technique to um, score some decent damage early on. Then it's just a case of uh, following around, get a few more slashes, a few more dashes and slashes in. There's a couple of different other options and approach using Rising Fire in this circumstance on Big K. Gets him down on the left side, so good start for him as uh, Spider Rail is in tow for Eric. Almost done on his end, and yep, down he goes as we go for the second round on Big K for. Apparate to the progenitor part one, sorry. And again, there's a couple of different techniques that we use that can be used here. Some use dashing, others mostly use rising fire. And you want to manipulate the flame, little flame thing there, so you can use the parry system to literally make mince meat of him as we go into the final final round. Yeah, Big K looking like he's bringing it up, uh, bringing it up an end here. This isn't too much of a threat of a fight. It can go wrong if you really want to let things get out of control, but. Um, I mean, experienced runners shouldn't see too much struggle here on this particular portion of things. We're going to keep an eye on Eric, see how his climb goes. I mean, again, if any du any big mistake uh, occurs here, um, that's only one save point difference between these runners. So I'm not going to try to curse and say, you know, that something bad will happen here. I think Big K's got this in short order. A little early on that last upward strike, but not a big deal. He's going to finish things off. We've got... Three G's for Big K1. Will be hopefully not doing the S word on the uh, the final bit there. Yeah, and I'm not even going to explain it because I've already drinked a few things already, and if I was to do that, I probably would drop out of the tournament just for doing it. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Like, right, I'm up. We got so Eric got going into his final stretch here. Let's let's keep an eye on his fights. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so dealing with Apparator again, using the charge technique, um, even using the charge, the full out charge dash, which actually act activates a shadow effect with a secondary striker. So it essentially gets more, a bit more damage in to um, put him down. So yeah, that's phase one. Good. Apparator done. We're going to Pro Gen one. Getting a bullying Apparator out of his lunch money as well. I always like when that happens. Guy's been kind of a jerk the entire thing. It's, I, I figure, it's, I figure it's the least he deserves. Good nice high parry there. there. Yeah. Very Getting nice up high parry. is a very important thing because you can actually parry the thing that actually is generating those. And that obviously makes you lose the ability to do parry strats. So good high jumps there to make sure he was able to keep that going. He's in the final phase now and already got like the first two bubbles open. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk about this much. So we only break out the ones on the, the left and the center um, for the purposes of... <clears throat> you know, getting the shield from the blue orb as well as the projectile attack from the pink one. The the one on the right does have a green orb in it, and it makes platforms. But ir ironically, we just use the pod it's stuck in as a platform. <laughs> we pogo off of to be able to get a little bit more strikes than, than what is casually intended here. So it has its uh, advantages as a platform, being a platform maker. Oh, you're going to get a little bit of extra, like, Mashiach strats there. Good pogoing at the end to finish that off without going to the ground. So, pre G's for Eric's. And I'll call out the time um, from uh, Race Time GG. Big K did finish with a time of 102.02 officially uh, within Race Time GG. So, he will be taking the win today. Uh, but Eric's very, very close on the heels here. Uh, will only be about a minute and some change behind when all, everything is said and done. So well raced by both of these runners. I only saw a small handful of deaths from both. We only had five from Big K. And I think Eric's is probably somewhere in that neighborhood as well. So good runs by both.
Very true. I mean, death is an inevitable thing when it comes to speedrun in this game. Um, it's not easy to get through the run in a deathless variant. And speaking of, hey, Mr. Big K1, welcome and uh, congratulations on the win. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us how you felt through that run. I mean, it was extremely solid, like no major mistakes for a long time. And, uh, you know, things were seemed to be going at least relatively smooth. So uh, go ahead and give us kind of your, your breakdown, how you felt throughout it. Um, yeah, basically the whole run was really smooth. Uh, I was on like a minute PB pace for a while. And then Combinatron happened and Cyber Shadow continued to happen afterwards. <laughs> yeah, the Combinatron fight, obviously, if you let that get out of hand, it, uh, it's a thing that, that occurs and then it probably puts you in a bad spot, I would assume, from Essence routing as well. Yeah, it's just like after that, I, I couldn't seem to recover the fight and then I decided I'm just gonna just get through it. <laughs> All right, just want to point out, Eric did finish with an official time of 103.55. That is a PB for him, unless he has some unknown, like, pending ones, but I don't think he does right at this moment. So this should be a PB or a race, which is actually really, really good with a game like this. Very nice. So a strong performance from both our runners today, so congrats on both ends. Um... But Big K, I guess you've got some worrying to do because you've got a, I believe you've got a round matchup now with the number two in 2C Plus. Um, how are you feeling into that? Nervous about that one. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. I haven't uh, raced 2C yet in this game, so... Also yeah, but you've got, you've got experience from him back in the, in the old Messenger days, though, right? You've done races with him in that before? Or? Yeah, so... Little so bit you, of a... you, you know what you're up against, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, Eric, welcome. More. We're welcoming you in as well. Congratulations yeah. on, I believe, what is a PB for you? Yeah, about a, about a five-second PB. Nice. Nice. Your run, much like Big K's, was extremely solid and flowing very, very well um, from the get-go up until pretty much later in the run do you want to walk us through how you felt uh, about how your race went or how your run went well felt like it was going pretty well up until chapter 10 i got into chapter 10 35 seconds ahead and then just died over and over again yeah Other chapter 10 doing chapter 10 things and i believe it was like an sp kind of like lack of sp i should say which is always kind of the challenge but um very good strats on getting through that one particular room sp list i know it took a couple of attempts but it was really smooth once you actually got it so that was quite impressive to watch thank you very true there okay um i don't know what else to say to be honest uh I think I've exp well, we've exposed all the questions I need, so I guess any final words from anyone before I forget to talk anymore? Uh, it was a good race, and good luck on the rest of the tournament, Big K. Yeah, thank you, and GG. It, was, uh, it looked like it was really close up in the end. <laughs> I recommend you guys watch it back. It was pretty darn close for the longest time. And uh, it got close again later, uh, which made things quite interesting. But uh, yeah, if there's nothing else from you guys, I want to at least plug out there. Go ahead and follow our runners. The The link is in chat from Streiser there. Uh, the, the Big K1 and uh, Eric's 33, both of them extremely great talents at this particular game and all the other games that they, they, they do. So highly worth your follow and time, as well as uh, following my uh, co-commentator, Mr. TKY619. I hear he's pretty good at this game, but I don't know. <laughs> well, 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 we'll see when I get commentator curse revenge. And then we'll see. We'll see how. You know, I, I could sign up for commentary for your race turkey. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, that's all. I'll schedule it during a week. That'd be fine. Oh, okay, smart lad. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, you know, again, want to thank Streiser86 for one, creating this tournament and, and kind of like getting us all together to, to do this game. I know it's relatively new. Community's very active and very supportive. And, and uh, Streiser has put in so much work for this game, showing how much passion he has for it. And uh, we appreciate all of the time and effort that he's put into hosting this as well. So, you know, if you're not following Mr. Streiser86, I'd highly recommend you do that as well. <laughs> Indeed, I guess I'll just quickly finish up. Although all match, the remaining matches, as far as I know, are still to be determined in terms of time and dates. There is at least three off the top of my head. I've got myself against Space Narc. That will probably happen at some point soon. Um, we got that DJ versus um, the Yankito, um in the second chance bracket round one. And as of right now, we have Big K versus 2C. So the, bat the battle of the messenger for an insider shadow. How will that happen? We will see. <laughs> But again, GG's to our runners, and hope you all had a good time. And um, with that being said, take it easy, and we'll catch you around next time.